Hey, do you know what's in common between a guinea pig, a fruit bat, and you? Most mammals can make their own vitamin C, but these ones can't. That's why I need vitamin C in my diet, but my dog doesn't. So why do you need vitamin C? How much do you need, and should you be taking a supplement? Let's science it. Hey, welcome to Nourishable, I'm Dr. Lara. Vitamin C is present in many fruits and vegetables. You may first think of citrus fruit, but it's also found in tomatoes, potatoes, and broccoli. Vitamin C has two main functions in the body, working as an antioxidant and speeding up chemical reactions. Antioxidants like vitamin C are super important for neutralizing naturally occurring oxidative stress. Think of oxidative stress as pollution from a power plant. When our cells' powerhouses are generating energy, they release pollution into the cell. This pollution is composed of highly reactive compounds called free radicals. Just like industrial pollution compromises air quality, oxidative stress pollution compromises cell quality by gunking up important structures like DNA and proteins. Free radicals are super reactive compounds because they contain an unpaired electron. And the thing about electrons is that they like to be in pairs, like mittens or socks. But free radicals, they have this lone, unpaired electron, making them highly unstable. In an effort to scavenge another electron, free radicals bounce around the cell, damaging proteins and DNA in their wake. This is where vitamin C's antioxidant power comes in. Vitamin C generously donates an electron to the free radical. This neutralizes the free radical to a stable, harmless compound. So vitamin C functions as an antioxidant to extinguish the daily pollution from free radicals. Vitamin C's second major function in the body is to help with enzymes. Enzymes are protein machines that catalyze chemical reactions. In the same way that a surgeon has nurses assisting in the operating room, enzymes have cofactors assisting them to catalyze reactions. Vitamin C plays the role of one of those surgical nurses in the operation of collagen formation. Collagen forms by winding three fibers together to make a triple helix, just like my hair when I braid it. This braiding action is performed by specific enzymes. These enzymes require vitamin C as a cofactor in order to braid the collagen fibers. If I don't use a hair elastic when I'm braiding my hair, then the braid falls apart. This is exactly what happens if collagen forms in the absence of vitamin C. We're left with weakened individual fibers. The shape is important here. The collagen braid is much stronger and much better at holding together the connective tissues of your body, such as your skin, tendons, and blood vessels. The name collagen is derived from the Greek word kola, meaning glue. Strong collagen braids are the glue that hold the body together. So what happens when you don't have enough vitamin C? Deficiency leads to a bunch of problems with weakened connective tissue, like rough skin, bleeding gums, and lost teeth. If sustained, it can cause death. This condition is called scurvy. And up until the 19th century, scurvy was a really big deal. This was a time when Europeans were embarking on long sea voyages, discovering the new world. Perishable fruits and vegetables rotted too quickly for the journey, so sailors were fueled on salted meats and biscuits. It was such a problem that scurvy was responsible for more deaths at sea than storms, shipwrecks, combats, and diseases. A 50% death rate was expected for sailors on long sea voyages. Needless to say, this was a tragic and expensive problem. The British government tasked Scottish physician James Lind with getting to the bottom of it. In 1747, he ran one of the first ever clinical trials. He took 12 sailors with scurvy and divided them into six pairs. Each pair received a different treatment, fermented cider, diluted sulfuric acid, vinegar, seawater, various drugs, or two oranges and a lemon per day. Those receiving citrus were cured of their scurvy after six days, whereas the next best remedy, cider, took at least two weeks. James Lind concluded that citrus fruits were the most effective remedies for scurvy. From then on, boats were packed with limes, and British sailors were known as limeys. But that didn't solve all the scurvy problems. Citrus fruits were still too perishable to last the entire journey, so sailors preserved them by cooking, then storing the juice in copper containers. Though they didn't know it at the time, it turns out that vitamin C is highly sensitive to heat and gets deactivated by copper. Their preservation methods caused a loss of vitamin C and subsequently a loss of faith in the citrus cure. But you really can't blame them because they didn't know what it was about the citrus that made it antiscorbutic or scurvy preventing. It wasn't until 1931 that the active ingredient ascorbic acid was isolated. 
Vitamin C is also known as ascorbic acid, a name derived for its anti-scorbutic properties. So if a little vitamin C cures scurvy, then a lot must be better, right? Walk through any pharmacy and you'll see shelves of vitamin C megadoses touted to treat colds and flus. This idea was pushed by two-time Nobel laureate Linus Pauling, who single-handedly exploded the vitamin C industry. More details on that story here. Bottom line, vitamin C megadoses don't cure the common cold. Clearly, we need vitamin C, but how much do you need, and what are the best ways to get it? Today, most people get enough vitamin C from a standard diet. Women need 75 milligrams, and men need 90 milligrams per day. One navel orange, or one cup of kale, or half a cup of red bell pepper each provide a day's worth. Vitamin C is super sensitive to heat, light, and air. Since it's water soluble, vitamin C is destroyed by cooking methods that involve lots of water and lots of heat, like boiling. Microwaving or steaming foods will minimize cooking losses. And don't forget the tale of the sailors deactivating their vitamin C in copper pots. Luckily, we tend to eat many vitamin C containing foods raw, which keeps the essential nutrient intact. Here's my nourishable take. Scurvy is clearly a terrible condition, but thankfully we don't have to worry about it much today. Unless you're doing something like the carnivore diet. Don't. Vitamin C is present in so many fruits and vegetables, and if you eat them raw or use methods like microwaving, you're definitely getting your daily dose. No need to take a vitamin C supplement when you can easily get enough from food. Dr. Lara's science law number five, food first. Many supplements contain up to 1,000 milligrams per dose, which is more than 10 times the amount you need. You're not gonna gain any super protection from mega doses. Since vitamin C is water soluble, your kidneys will excrete out whatever you don't need. Expensive urine. Dr. Lara science law number six, more isn't necessarily better. In fact, you're only likely to do more harm than good with too much of anything. That's what science tastes like. Thanks for tuning in to Nourishable. Check out all my references in the video description and be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all things nutrition.